Hi, this is Ginger and you're watching Gnostic Psych. I'm filling in for Sean today. Uh, it's here that we talk to you about the arcane and the interesting with psychology. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about cognitive biases and the concept of protest psychosis. We all have um, backgrounds based on our biopsychosocial makeup. Um, we're all influenced by um, our genetic psyche and our environment and our culture that we grow up in. As a result, all of us have cognitive biases based on our backgrounds. In particular, when it comes to viewing a situation um, versus someone else of a different race, culture, religious background, sex, gender, sexual orientation. I'm not saying that people of different demographics are incapable of seeing a situation the same. I mean, because at the end of the day, we're all humans. Um, people are obviously capable um, of reaching a consensus in diverse backgrounds, uh, yet we all have subconscious mental filters uh, referred to in psychology as schemas um, that cognitively influence how we look at things. Um, they're also known as biases. One type of uh, cognitive bias is re referred to as a heuristic. And basically what it is, it's a mental shortcut that we have in order to process all the external stimuli that we get bombarded with from the minute we wake up to the minute we go to bed. Uh, if we didn't have these mental shortcuts, uh, we would be lost in a sea of stimuli, not being able to really take it in, process and understand what's going on around us. Uh, so there's a positive there. The downside is that we can make generalizations about people <clears throat> belonging to other backgrounds. Uh, this is no different when it comes to mental health practitioners. Uh, one such example was uh, what Jonathan Metzl explained in his 2011 book, The Protest Psychosis, um, which is basically uh, based on the cognitive biases of white psychologists and psychiatrists toward black males who uh, were schizophrenic. Um, at that time, that the theory of protest psychosis came out. There was a lot of uh, um, rioting, um, a lot of violence, because this is during the Civil Rights Act immediately after. And uh, uh, for some reason, um, the white mental health practitioners couldn't see that maybe the uh, protesting and the violence um, and just the general anger on the streets was not related to schizophrenia at all or any kind of mental illness. It was actually discontent with the social order and uh, systemic racism. Um, let's see here. And as a result, um, there was a lot of uh, uh, black males that were diagnosed who were part of the civil rights movement as being um, psychotic. Uh, for example, um, an FBI forensic psychologist actually had diagnosed Malcolm X as having pre-psychotic paranoid schizophrenia. Um, I guess in the, the minds of the white psychiatrists and psychologists, they couldn't see, um, you know, beyond the bias of their race. Uh, it also led to this phenomenon of... Um, antipsychotics being marketed in advertisements, in particular Haldol and Thorazine with having African themes in it, African symbols, imagery, and it was to kind of allude there being some kind of a link between going to see uh, Eldridge Cleaver speak and then um, rioting as if it leads to mental illness or something like that. Uh, the two guys who were responsible for the theory uh, were psychiatrists. Let me see here. Use my space. Walter Bromberg and Frank Simon. Um, it never became an official theory. At that time, even though psychology was dominated by white males as far as a field, um, there was many who disagreed with them. There was no evidence at all whatsoever linking the two. Um, and, I mean, it was thrown out eventually. Um, however, the stigma that was created of the violent black male 
uh, schizophrenic or psychotic, uh, let a re let a, um, excuse me, left a residual um, stigma um, that still affects mental health practitioners to this day when it comes to diagnosis. Uh, it also left a stigma for schizophrenics in general as being violent and a threat to the community. Uh, fortunately, um, in recent years, there have been multicultural uh, classes that have been in more counseling uh, and psychology programs in general for colleges that are all about um, getting the student to see outside their own cognitive biases and beyond their own background to see where the client is coming from um, rather than just subconsciously again, succumbing to that heuristic of thinking you know where they're coming from when in fact you don't. Um, so that is a step in the right direction. Um, I do recommend the book, uh, The Protest Psychosis, for anybody who's interested in um, culture, uh, black history, or psychology in general. So that's all I have, and um, Sean might be here next time, I don't know. Uh, he has been on vacation since he finished school. So if I don't see you next time, um, I will see you hopefully in the future. Bye.